What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Soplatocha. Today we are going to be talking about my recovery process right now for this weird peroneal tendon IT band syndrome that's uh, I'm experiencing in my right leg that I've been discussing in my last vlog and essentially how this is now just a race to recovery for my race day which is next Sunday. So before we get into it make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're ready to subscribe to the channel and watching the content, thanks so much. Love you guys very much. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to do my best to keep this one brief because it is Halloween weekend. I got to try to get out there. I've got plans this time around. I'm not usually a big Halloween person to begin with, but that's neither here nor there. Let's uh, let's talk about this. So just a recap for those who have not watched the previous video. Um, basically, it's post Chicago Marathon. So, you know, your bodies are still kind of beat up. It's like two, three weeks after the race. You're still going to experience some weird like soreness and whatnot if you're you know for, it's your first time running the marathon and whatnot for me like i'm usually pretty good after like two to three days but this time around i immediately jumped into a 10k race training plan like literally 24 to 48 hours after the chicago marathon which is kind of a steep jump a lot of people don't recommend that but some people can get away with it i've gotten away with it in 2018 and 2019 respectively and you know, I haven't had too many issues, but this is the one year where there was some residual marathon fatigue that kind of followed me through, and I did get sick uh, with, like, some kind of cold. Not the COVID, so we're still good. And basically, you know, with that, uh, I ended up taking, like, some cough medicine, some sleep aids that contain painkillers, like acetaminophen and whatnot. And in turn, whenever you train after sleeping with those types of painkillers you can have some residual effects that follow you and if you're running or doing something like that you're not going to feel necessarily the same kind of soreness and pain you would have otherwise experienced so in this case i was doing some hard training blocks after you know these sleep aids and whatnot and i ended up like really pushing my peroneal tendon on the right anterior side of my leg to a limit where in most cases, this is like a code orange where I have to take a step back and I literally didn't run at all yesterday because I knew this was kind of bad. I knew I had to actually follow the rice method in order to get this one uh, pretty much played out. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So, of course, rest is important. There's um, no question about that whatsoever. In this particular case, uh, the eye ice, I've been doing a lot of that and the ice has been a huge game changer when it comes to helping determine where the pain is coming from so for me putting that ice on the right side of my like leg and the ankle was it helped me determine that this wasn't like some sort of calf or soleus strain this was more of you know this peroneal it band area just slightly above like the ankle joint and it, it essentially just told me that there was something in my running form that was stimulating this and i let it go on for a little too long and essentially it is what it is now that I have to take a day off from running. So, um, of course, compression. It's kind of hard to compress this one. I am using a lot of, you know, Kinesio tape whenever it's available to me. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them whatsoever. I don't really, like, want to endorse them necessarily unless they want to pay me and that stuff. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. And, uh, of course, E, exercise. This is the one that's most debated. Like, should you exercise when you've got some kind of soreness? I say yes, and this is me, a non-medical professional, telling you that if I was put in a position where we have active recovery and passive recovery available for something that you're sore from, I will 10 out of 10 times choose the active recovery, and here's why. Um, first and foremost, blood flow is extremely important to any sort of recovery. That's just what I've learned historically, especially with areas that are sore on your body or bones that you've broken that are in places where there's not a lot of blood flow that may take a little bit longer to heal, you should do everything possible to get that blood flow into those areas. So if you're like breaking something in like, I don't know, like the pinky of your toe, for example, that could take like months to heal. Like you need to get as much blood flow in there as possible. And in my particular case, like anecdotal example, I broke my foot six months before this 70.3. And the doctor told me I was not going to be able to do the 70.3 because I would not recover in time. And what happened was I said, screw that. And I jumped on a bike and I basically for like an hour a day, I was biking just to stimulate that blood flow throughout, you know, my legs, my entire body. And within a month and a half to about two months, I was 100% recovered and I was full steam ahead for 70.3 training. So 
that's just me telling you that, but again, to each their own. Some people think mind over matter isn't really a thing, but, you know, I'll tell you that it quite is. If you want to, you know, relax and take care of an injury like that, by all means, go for it. But I'm not the one to sit down. Like, if I have the option to do something about it, I will. Okay, so let's talk about the breakthroughs that happened today. So, knowing that I didn't run yesterday, like, I can survive... Uh, you know, just existing. If I don't run for like one day, I'll get a little antsy and I'll get, be a little bit upset because, you know, you want to run, you want to put something in. Um, so I knew if I like did a bike and swim workout, I could kind of get away with like not stressing about not the not doing like a run. And that's what I did yesterday. I swam for like about, a you know, a thousand yards and then I like biked for about 30, 40 minutes just to get that, you know, cardiovascular activity going. I felt pretty good overall about that. But now when you're put in a position where you're not running for two days because of an injury, now you're kind of in this mindset of fight or flight, I suppose, where you're like, okay, what do I need to do today to make sure I'm running yesterday? So in this case, ice was still part of the deal. I was icing about like every other hour whenever it was possible. And I also did a bike workout on Zwift. So I did ride for about like 30, 35 minutes just to get that blood flow going once again. Not very high impact, so it didn't make the peroneal tendon IT band feel too bad at all. Next, I did go to the gym today. So the idea was just to do, you know, this leg day, get it done. And I did a few box squats, a few Nordic hamstring curls. And then I saw some recommended workouts for... I guess, um, isolation of both legs where one of them is like this jumping sprint workout where you put one leg on a box and the other one, you're using it to spring off the ground and you're just trying to simulate like a jumping motion for one leg. So I tried that with both legs. And of course there's an imbalance between both of my legs right now. Like my right leg with this tendon that's supposed to initiate this kind of a joint, um, push motion is really sore and it's kind of weak too. Like I have to use a little bit of my left leg to lift you know, the right leg up. So it's very possible that the wear on my shoes could be a result of a huge imbalance between both legs where the right leg is dragging possibly more than the left one. And of course, the other thing to always focus on here now is calf raises, which historically I never do calf raises because if I'm running, that's usually my calf training. This time I'm a little more focused on isolation just to see again which leg is stronger. And as you can probably guess, my left leg is a lot stronger than the right. Considering that I broke the left foot, that I, you would think that imbalance would have like made my right leg stronger, but it doesn't. And of course, like when I'm doing single-legged like hamstring raises or like a dumbbell, like when you're picking up the thing from the ground to you know, uh, with just like one leg, I can't even think of the name of the workout. I'm so like fried right now. Um, basically, you can see that like with my right leg, I'm leaning really far outside just to like you know activate more hip to balance rather than like knee and uh ankle which is so strange so like that was just a really interesting thing to observe like in terms of imbalances so that was kind of all that workout stuff like and then of course a lot of resistance band stuff whenever available just do some front like motions with the leg uh do some sideways motions uh and then do some inside pulls just to you know stimulate this tendon that was frying uh that's basically in sore and just in pain on my right leg and all those kinds of things so you know i just take them on head first to just try to you know get in there try to get some blood flow in those pain points and that's kind of how just we roll with it now here's where things got the most interesting of course i go on the track and i'm thinking to myself let's try to run like 10 minute per mile pace because i may as well try just kind of feel this out because if i'm not going to be good in like nine days before race day i need to know what running like this is going to feel like so of course i'm running with the mach fours and it's not feeling good and i can visibly see it in like the reflection in the glass on the track uh, upstairs that like my form is just off in terms of like there's both legs are you know coming off the ground differently i'm clearly sliding one leg a little bit more than the other and it's not great and i know for a fact that i'm landing on like the anterior side of my foot when i'm running with my right leg and my left foot seems to be pretty like flat and i'm landing closer to the ball of my foot which is i guess what it's supposed to be doing and it's just not feeling good overall so in a last uh, in a last ditch effort, I end up taking off the shoes and I just say, let's try to just run barefoot. I'm basically taking a playbook out of my Florida training days, and I knew that when I had like injured my peroneal tendon, then I was running barefoot in the sand and I felt awesome. 
I ran like five miles barefoot and I like shredded my calluses entirely off. And it was amazing because I thought like for sure I like shredded my skin to the bone, but I just like really shredded off the calluses. It was like no big deal. So basically, um, at this point in time, I'm running with socks on the track and I realized that when I'm landing with my right foot now, I'm landing on the ball of the foot with more of the interior side of my foot, which is amazing because that's kind of what I'm looking for. So this brings up two things. One, clearly because of running outside in the city with the ground being, you know, slightly slanted when you're running from south to north, this can almost teach your foot to be landing on an anterior side naturally, which is not good. And then it translates when you're running on flat ground to do the same thing where it's almost turning inward and it's also anterior based. So it's like almost crossing when you're running. And that's something that I was a little more conscious of with the Mach 4s today. And the point there is like, I'm trying to get the leg to straighten itself out and land with the ball of the foot. And it's possible that the arch of the shoe also might be a little more intense than normal. And these are just things I started noticing. And of course, when I'm running barefoot, the point here is I felt really good. Like the pain in my peroneal tendon was extremely minimal. I was able to do a couple sprints barefoot and feel good about it. So at the end of the day, the lesson here is like, I should be trying to run a little bit more, you know, barefoot with at least socks for in this case on a track, for example, just to get more of a natural landing rather than this artificial, you know, um, elevation from the shoe i guess not elevation but i would say well i guess from stack height perspective yes elevation but i'm talking about more like the arches just kind of giving you this forced anterior landing so yeah running barefoot does kind of put you at a risk of you know getting interior shin splints but i'm not too concerned about that because i'd rather take the pressure off the peroneal tendon for now and i've gotten over interior shin splints a long time ago my bone strength is back the tendon that follows the bone is nice and strong i'm not too worried about that like ultimately so at this point in time that's the lessons learned is that I, I could take a little break from running i could also do a lot of cross training it won't be an issue but the other thing to consider is running barefoot for now until the peroneal tendon kind of figures its thing out and also in the process try to fix some of the imbalances by potentially just running barefoot and like of course having this weight training for both legs isolations things like that to get to a point that maybe after this Polish Independence 10K, I can continue correcting these imbalances and potentially never have these issues again, leading into other races and so forth. So the status update right now is that I feel a lot better than I did when I initially uh, put myself in this code orange state with my peroneal tendon. And I'm feeling a lot better now. The ice definitely helps. This cross training has helped me a lot. And running barefoot is helping a lot just to remove the pressure off this peroneal tendon. So we're going to continue on with it. Hopefully I'll be at least 80 to 90% recovered before race day. And I hope that the field is like not too crazy where I have a competitive chance of at least breaking top 10 at this point. And if that peroneal tendon's at like 100% condition, I got to break top five. I don't know if I'll win first place just only because this, this minor setback's got me kind of in a predicament where it's going to be very difficult to have the best possible race when some of my key workouts were missed. But I'll end the video here. So if you like the information I gave, you know, give it a thumbs up. If you guys got some like counter information or some kind of like similar stories, you know, lay it down in the comments below. Definitely want to hear how you guys are recovering from injuries. If you follow a similar philosophy of active recovery is best recovery or rest day, best day, you know, just kind of hit me with that stuff. So with that in mind, I'm going to end the video here. It's time to get out of the town for Halloween, and we'll kind of see what happens from here on out. So thanks so much for watching the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.